All right, finally, we're going to describe in this last part of the lecture how you can also have recombination between phages. Um, so phages, you know, these phages can have different genotypes as well. Um, so again, this is an example of phages, four different strains of phages that have different genotypes and thus different phenotype. Um, so you can see this one right here has these alleles of the H and the R gene, and as a result, the plaques look something like this. This right here has the H plus and the R, so these allele combination is different, and so you can see they have a lighter plaque but the same large size. Um, and then you can have a light small plaque and then a dark small plaque. So this is just an example of four different genotypes. And as a result, they have four different um, phenotypes. And so you can imagine, you know, the phage has its genome and you have the location of the gene. And so, you know, the four combinations will look something like this, where the genes are at different positions, um, and then you have the different allele combinations between them. So, various phenotypes of phages. Um, so, minute um, is the name of a phenotype where the phage forms very small plaques. Um, so I believe this is minute. Um, so the R gene controls the minute phenotype. Um, turbid, so whether or not they form these turbid plaques. Uh, star is irregular plaques. Um, UV sensitive, so how sensitive they are to UV light. Um, resistance to this um, type of agar that has ac acroflavin, um, osmotic shock, etc. Um, and then amber is another one. So it, it grows on one type of strain of E. coli, but not the other. So these are two different types of strains of E. coli. Um, so amber determines whether or not they can infect um, each of the strains or just one of the strains. Um, so there's all sorts of different uh, phenotypes that these um, plaques can have, and you know the idea is that there's multiple genes that control each of these different phenotypes, and they're kind of located throughout the phage genome. And so what was shown is that you can actually have recombination occur between different viral particles and viral, viral genomes. And so this is only possible, though, if you get these um, two pieces of DNA kind of within the same cell. So, you know, the challenge is the only way, the only time that recombination can occur is when you have the two different pieces of DNA in the same cell. And so this is only possible during mixed infection experiments. And this is only possible when two distinct mutant strains simultaneously infect um, a bacterial particle. And so, you know, the idea is that you have one viral particle of one genotype and another viral particle of another genotype and they both inject their DNA into the cell at the same time. So this is a bit of a difficult situation to have happen, but it is definitely totally possible, especially over evolutionary time scales. So you can have a cell that has DNA from two independent phages and they have different genotypes. Um, so once that happens, you can actually have recombination occur in between these DNAs, the, these pieces of DNA. And so typically what happens is you have a linear crossover where now you've created two new allele combinations. So here is the name of an allele, here is the name of a second allele, um, and you've co-infected these two together. And so if the crossover occurs in the middle, something like this, you're going to end up creating two what are called recombinants. So one will be wild type, and then one will be a piece of DNA that has both alleles on it. And so all of a sudden you have phages that will have the wild type gene restored um, because you now have a wild type piece of DNA because you managed to recom recombine between these two pieces of DNA. 
Um, and so you can use this in order to um, determine how close um, these are. So you mix these two um, viral particles together. So you have a bunch of viral particles from both these genotypes. You simultaneously affect, infect bacteria um, with these, and then you either have non-recombinants or recombinants that are wild type, and then you can count how often that happens. Um, so this, you know, the, you, you use these plates in order to calculate the total number of phages. So you have on this order of eight times 10 to the ninth number of phages, and then you can calculate how often recombinants occur. And so, you know, what you're looking at is actually something that occurs very, very rarely, you know, 10 to the third divided by 10 to the ninth. So it's one out of a million, um, you know, it only occurs one out of a million times. All right, so that is the end of what we will be covering on phages. Um, so this, you know, chapter is is a bit of a departure because you know you don't think a lot about haploids, um, but hopefully, uh, you know, this this lecture helps clarify kind of um, the approach to genetic exchange and um, bacteriophages, and then also how you phenotype and grow these.